2014 was a big year at the ANU College of Asia in the Pacific. Here are a few of the highlights. January, the Strategic and Defence Studies Centre is named Best University-Based Think Tank in Australia. February, Dr John Blackslan puts his new Aussie flag design to the test with an online poll. Here in Australia, we need to choose between a new design or being stuck with a faintly embarrassing anachronism. Also in February, staff move into the new Australian Centre on China and the World Building. They wanted a building that was reflected the requirements of a research institution, but also a place that was aesthetically um, significant, that had modern Chinese elements in it, but also reflected um, the ANU's position in Canberra, the light of Canberra, um, the beauty of this university campus. March. Robert Cribb's book, Wild Man from Borneo, is published. The book looks at similarities between people and orangutans. On almost all the tests of humankind, orangutans are there. Now, they're not as clever as humans, but they do a lot of things that, uh, that humans can do. April, Reese Crawley promotes his new book, Climax at Gallipoli. It focuses on some, some heavy myths that have evolved over the past hundred years, and one of those is that um, Gallipoli was, was the main thing happening in 1915. Now, that's not the case. It was really um, a small part of a much broader picture. May, Korean calligraphy master Kim Chong-yong comes to the ANU College of Asia in the Pacific. June, Des Ball and Hugh White win their Orders of Australia for contribution to the nation in defence and intelligence. July, we host a VIP from Japan. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has visited the Australian National University as part of his historic visit to Australia. The visit recognises the university's long-standing and growing links with Japan. Also in July, just over 200 students from the ANU College of Asia and the Pacific attend a conferring of awards ceremony. When you've done your bachelor's degree at the best university for Asian studies, you've got to come back for your PhD. August. We speak to hundreds of visitors on campus at ANU Open Day. September. Susan Harris Rimmer leads Gender Equality Meeting at ANU ahead of the 2014 G20 Summit in Brisbane. This is one of the first times ever in the world that we've had this type of discussion about investing in gender equality. Also in September, Joan Beaumont wins the 2014 New South Wales Premier's Australian History Prize for her study of the First World War. She later went on to also win the Prime Minister's Prize for Australian History. October. David Horner's book, The Spy Catchers, is launched. The first official look at ASIO's secret files. In the same month, Crawford School's Peter Drysdale wins the Japan Foundation Award for 2014. And there was the ANU Nessia Festival, a showcase of cultural performances, food and real hospitality from the Pacific Islands. November, Bruce Chapman and Nicole Haley win Vice-Chancellor's Staff Excellence Awards for their contribution to public policy. December, students visit Hawaii for ANU Pacific Islands Field School. Now that the holidays are over, we can't wait to get stuck into the 2015 academic year.